Hi everyone. Glad to see all of you here today with me and a very good evening to all of you here. So thanks for taking the time for, join up, for joining us here today. And I hope that wherever you're tuning in comfortably, whether it's at home, over dinner, or just relaxing, uh, just enjoy. And um, my name is Alyssa Ng, I'm Director of Project Sales and Marketing. So today I'll be sharing why you should buy Midtown Modern with 101% confidence. So why 101? Uh, I'll be coming to that. Okay, today's webinar is a bit different uh, from the others that I've done. Um, and usually I'll be sharing a lot on the market, on the growth prospect, um, but perhaps not too much on the development itself. However, for today, uh, and Meta Modern itself, it's really a development that sells by itself. So in this webinar, you'll find me sharing a bit more uh, about how impressive this development is. Okay, and not only is Midtown Modern impressive, it has superb location, um, the growth prospects are massive, and there is and really still a very excellent time to enter the property market. So this makes Midtown Modern a launch not to be missed. Okay, so for today's webinar, I'll also be covering on the aspects of, uh, you know, some of the market outlooks on the property market itself. Okay, but my main focus will be on Midtown Modern. Okay, because I think this is a development that is really very rare to come by, and it's really one that, um, you really don't, it doesn't come by. Uh, it's only come by once in a blue moon. Okay, so um, while I'm conducting the webinar, feel free to ask any questions that you may have in the chat group. Okay, um, the leaders here will be attending to you, okay, to respond as promptly as we can uh, to our best uh, in the chat group. So feel free to pose any questions you may have over there. Okay, either that or you can uh, revert to your Hutton's consultant who has invited you today, okay? And anything you'd like to clarify, just refer back to, to them uh, and we will revert sooner. Okay, they will definitely revert to you with uh, whichever information or answer that you would like to have answered. Okay, so um, while I, I'm going to start soon, uh, if you have the screen, you can actually maximize it to, to see the slides to the best, uh, to, the, to, the largest, to the largest that you can see on your screen. So just do the adjustment, um, you know, to maximize the slides. Okay. Okay. So let's start. Uh, once again, for those who just joined, I think people are still streaming in. A uh, good evening to all of you. And, uh, uh, you know, sit back and enjoy. Okay, so this is just a quick disclaimer. So today I'll be sharing, um, uh, you know, facts, uh, statistics as well. However, I'll be sharing some of my own personal opinions. So of course, everyone has different opinions. Uh, there's no right or wrong. Sometimes it's preference. Uh, sometimes it's just different uh, opinions. Okay, so just a quick disclaimer over here. Okay, so uh, why you should buy Midtown Modern with 101% confidence? Okay, let's take a look at it. Okay, I'm going to go through a few uh, pointers to give you a more um, overall perspective uh, of this topic. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to touch on the location itself. Of course, when we talk about property, we always say location is everything, right? Okay, however, for Midtown Modern, it's not just the location. Okay, they actually tie it in with concept and community, which I will touch on later. And if you talk about um, the recent uh, articles, media writes up uh, on Guacoland, uh, they have conducted various interviews. It's very interesting how from a developer perspective, they want to contribute back to uh, society and uh, the overall, uh, you know, district itself. Okay, so this um, actually enhances the entire uh, location aspect. Okay, um, the next point will be a signature Guacoland luxury residence. So of course, this developer is Guacoland. Uh, they are very signature in terms of certain things that they deliver and they really take pride and push the boundaries of what they actually deliver to consumers. Okay, they are trusted buyers. Okay, so it's a luxury res residence. Okay, it's also a trusted developer with strong holding power. So when we talk about the value, um, I, would, I would relate this back to this point over here. Okay, and of course, also a proven strong rental yield and demand, uh, especially for this location. I think Bugis is very interesting. Uh, you will start to see it's actually already in the process of transforming. However, there are still a lot of uh, uh, plots to be developed and still to undergo redevelopment. Okay, so um, it's already very proven strong rental demand and yield, and yet you're still going to see more changes happening. Okay, and so with that, it leads me to my last point. Uh, on the massive potential gain that Midtown Modern uh, will be realizing. Okay, so on that point, I'll be touching on the growth 
uh, the market outlook as well as the exit strategy when you plan for a property investment. Okay, so of course today, uh, some of you here may not be tuning in just for Midtown Modern. You just like to give a, to have a, a perspective on how to uh, how to read the market on how uh, you know the outlook on ge in general. Okay, so I'll be touching on this uh, on the last factor itself. Okay, so I'll start on location first. Okay, so for Midtown Modern, it's an extremely rare location that is not to be missed. This was what I was mentioning. Um, why extremely rare? Because it's sitting directly above an MRT interchange. Not just an MRT, but sitting directly above an MRT interchange, which means you don't even need to walk very far. Once you go down to level one, uh, there is already an existing uh, you know, escalator access down to the basement uh, where you are directly linked to Boogie's Junction and Boogie's MRT interchange. Okay, so once you go down, straight away you hit it okay so uh, this i think is a very interesting cross-sectional view of um, the whole development you see over here okay this is midtown modern itself so it actually takes up you know level one you have your commercial on level one which is 21 restaurants okay and then you actually go up level two you have your car park and then level three is where it opens up to your e deck which is your level one of the development okay so again, it's sitting right above an MRT interchange. So from this cross-sectional view, you can actually see uh, the two towers, okay? Residence once they actually exit, you can go down straight away to uh, base to level one or even to direct to basement one. And you can see how it connects. Okay, so this, uh, this side over here will be the new connection. Okay, so in fact, the connectivity is going to further enhance, it's going to improve even more. Uh, there's going to be a direct underground pedestrian network linking you to the future Guaco Midtown. Okay, so we're already part of Guaco Midtown. Uh, Guaco Midtown itself is a massive 3.2 hectares uh, mixed-use development. Okay, it, in it includes um, 770,000 square feet of grade A offices. It includes Midtown Bay uh, uh, premium business homes and also Midtown Modern Luxury Garden Homes. Okay, so we are part of this Guaco Midtown that is really going to set the benchmark. Um, a developer has a plans, uh, very massive plans for it um, to really change this into a new Midtown district. Okay, so it's going to be the new Midtown district of Singapore. Okay, so... Again, uh, you're going to you see all the connections. You are going to be directly connected, uh, direct access, sheltered access to Duo Gateway. Uh, you know Bugis Junction. You can walk to City Hall. Uh, you are directly also uh, linked to Santec City and many more. So I'll be covering the aspect later. So this is really an extremely rare location. Okay, not to be missed. Okay, and also this leads me to. Pitam being an excellent choice for both investment and stay. So why do I say that? Okay, so previous slide I covered on direct integration to Boogie's Interchange, uh, you know, uh, which is the east, west and downtown line, two major lines, okay? And you are also walking distance to the north, south and circle line. So you're actually walking distance to two other MRT interchange, which is City Hall, as well as Promenade, and also another in, uh, MRT, which is the Esplanade. So uh, really walking distance to uh, you know, very, very connected network, okay? Walking distance to shopping malls. So this is really amazing, okay? Uh, we are not just talking about one mega established uh, shopping mall, which is Bugis Junction. You're talking about, you're walking to Guacomi Town. You have your retail restaurants over there. Even at level one, you have restaurants here. Uh, just across the road, you have your eateries, famous eateries at Tan Quilan. Duo, you also have your eateries and retail, okay? <clears throat> you're also walking distance to South Beach itself. Okay, Suntec City, which is a mega, mega mall, uh, Raffles City, as well as Marina Square. And all these are just doorstep to you. So your doorstep to many major malls in the area, shopping malls. Okay, and all these are really recognized and renowned uh, retail destinations. Okay, so um, also five to 10 minutes drive to other key districts. We're talking about, uh, we're right smack in the CBD, okay? However, we are also directly uh, a direct train network to Raffles Place, Tanjong Paga, Marina Bay, and Orchard Road. And all these are within 10 minutes drive as well. Okay, you are also uh, close proximity to four major expressway, your ECP, your Marina Coastal Expressway, your KPE, and also the upcoming North-South Corridor. So there's also going to be transport that is further going to improve, okay, in this uh, Ophir Rocha Beach Road district. So a lot of uh, transformation and rejuvenation plans coming up, okay, in, even in terms of the transportation network. Okay, uh, in terms of schools, for those who are looking for stay, uh, you'll be asking, so what schools are there? So there are many established schools along MRT lines. You have your ACS, okay, your Singapore Chinese Girls School, uh, National Junior College, St. Joseph Institute, NUS, okay, and more, Hua Chong and more. 
Okay, and of course, we have uh, many landmarks just at the doorstep as well, your National Library, National Gallery, National Museum, Kampong Glam. Okay, and of course, you are directly, you want to head overseas, uh, hopefully sometime soon. Okay, uh, just 40 minutes drive to Changi Airport or a direct train over there, okay? So this is just uh, an idea of the schools along the uh, lines, okay? You can actually just take a train direct to them. And all these are just a few stops away. So at Newton, you have your ACS uh, Junior, ACS Barker, you have at Tangkaki, you have your SCGS, Hua Chong Institute, just six stops away. Uh, your Nian Poly, just eight stops away, just a direct train route down using the downtown line. Okay, and then at Stevens, you have your SCGS, SGI, Nanyang Girls High, Pei Hua, and JC. Okay, same for the east-west line, um, very convenient access to the schools over here. Um, okay, namely, I just want to highlight even NUS is just 11 stops away and then your NTU. Okay, so your tertiary institutions, uh, you know, and all this are just a quick ride away. Okay, um, this one I'll touch more on this later, but basically I just want to show you Waco Midtown itself is going to be a major, you're already right smack uh, in a business hub itself, okay, Bugis itself, you have major offices, uh, you have, uh, it's a major commercial node. However, you are also directly connected and close proximity to others in other commercial nodes in the CBD, like Raffles Place, uh, Tangjong Paga, these are just two, three stops away. You are also just four stops to your Paya Lebar Regional Center, okay, uh, and also a direct stop to Changi Business Park, uh, One North Business Park, uh, which is Guana Vista and your Jurong Lake District, which is just 12 stops away. So wherever it is, even, you know, your spouse may stay further away, you may just stay directly in the CBD. It is close to anywhere in Singapore and you can get anywhere in Singapore very fast. Okay, so be it investment, uh, this also affects your tenants. Uh, they may just want to stay in Bugis. You know, they may be working in Changi Business Park. They may just want to stay in Bugis because of the vibrant lifestyle, uh, the whole CBD living, the whole convenience of that CBD living uh, in that, uh, you know, you're right in the central, that, that whole vibrancy, okay, of, uh, of that lifestyle that they want to enjoy, that whole city living, okay. And I would say that um, this will really be a city of the future, okay. This is something that Guacoland strives to create uh, over here. They really want to rejuvenate and have another flagship development in this uh, Bugis area, okay. So this will be very, very happening uh, place. Uh, already it is, I think, coming up is even more so. Okay, so um, so you have your east-west line, your downtown line. Besides schools, besides commercial nodes, of course, you have your lifestyle destinations. You have your gardens by the bay, Marina Bay Sands, uh, your Bukit Timah Nature Reserve, your botanic gardens, Fort Canning Hill. All these are just, um, you know, direct, direct uh, train access away from you as well. Okay, just five stops, six stops up to nine stops away. And of course, Jewel also. Okay, so um, um, just to wrap up on this location aspect, Mita Modern, it has the best of everything. I've covered retail. You have mega, uh, renowned, established, uh, renowned uh, retail destinations. Okay, <clears throat> you have your dining, your entertainment amenities, getting to school, be it from primary to university, it is really very convenient. Getting to work at various business hubs is also a breeze, okay? So Bugis Junction, okay, this is where we are. Uh, if you can see my cursor, Mita Modern is over here. Uh, this is Jewel. Okay, this is Bugis Junction over here. Just across the road, you just cross the street. You are already, you know, um, at your Tan Kui Lan stretch of famous eateries, your Langsia Street. Okay, so people really travel all the way here to eat. No need. Next time you just go down, uh, it is right at your doorstep, okay? Uh, of course, if you want to grab food up, it's also very easy. So everything is really um, very, very convenient over here. So there will be a new uh, underground pedestrian network that connects, uh, you know, this uh, Guaco Midtown to Midtown Modern to Guaco Midtown itself. So uh, again, we're part of Guaco Midtown. Over there, you have your Midtown House, Midtown Square and Marketplace. Okay, so all these are, again, um, areas where people gather. Uh, it's also, you know, eating destinations as well. Okay. And then, of course, from Guaco Midtown, there is a second level overhead bridge that connects directly to Suntec City itself. So, from Guaco Midtown, you have a direct connection to Suntec City itself. Okay. And over there, of course, Mega Malls. It's a Mega Mall itself. Then, uh, Dual Gallery. Again, once you go down, you are directly connected. Okay. Your Haji Lane, your South Beach, you have your retail, uh, you know. Uh, dining uh, establishments, fine dining establishments there as well, Esplanade, Raffles City Shopping Centre, okay, and Chimes, and Raffles Hotel. Okay, so location-wise, it's really power-packed. Uh, you're already directly above the MRT interchange, your shops, schools, 
uh, you know, everything, okay, is right there. So um, I've touched on the location. So Bugis as a location itself, I'll coming back, I'll be coming back and revisiting this again because I want to talk about the transformation that's uh, happening and going to happen over there. Okay. Okay, now I'm going on to the next point, which is the signature Guacoland luxury residence. Okay, so for Guacoland itself, let's take a look at some of their um, developments, okay, some of their more recent developments. Okay, uh, what we're looking over here is Leiden Residence, okay, the Holland area, uh, Goodwood Residence and Wallet Residence. These are developed by them. Okay, so uh, like I mentioned, it's not just about location and Midtown Modern, it's about the concept and the community. And this is something that they really take pride uh, in positioning themselves as. So I think concept is very important to have a strong concept. Uh, it gives that identity, it gives that uh, foothold and that uh, landmark destination that, uh, you know, really adds to the value of a property itself. Okay, so for leader residents, um, now I'm talking about just the development itself. Huh? Later I'll be talking about locational wise. Okay, so for leader residents, a lot of the residents actually enjoy uh, hanging out in the, in the lounge areas in the lounge area itself, okay? And uh, Google Residence, this is something interesting. So they have this very uh, grand open space, which is your lawn area. And in fact, developers shared that, uh, you know, uh, a tentage was ever set up there before to host a wedding. So it was very beautiful. It's about community coming together, okay? Uh, holding, uh, you know, a, a wedding over there, okay? It's something that's really nice to, to tie in, um, the, to bind uh, the community together, okay? So that's something that uh, is really, unique to Guacoland, okay? And at Wallet Residence, uh, this is something interesting. Even before COVID itself, uh, a lot of the residents actually worked from home, out of home, which means that they actually worked uh, not in the house itself, okay, but in the lounge area. So they actually enjoyed, uh, uh, you know, the space that Guacoland actually have in the lounge. Uh, they did up, you know, um, uh, areas that were easy for people to, to work from, okay, your, your charging points and all that. So uh, this is something interesting and something that is a bit uh, future thinking about cre creating spaces, okay, um, to meet the demands and ever-changing demands of how society lives, of how we work, okay, now, uh, especially working from home and how this concept is further enhanced. Okay, so uh, Guaco Tower, uh, which is where Wallet Residence is, is really a flagship development that has changed the game in uh, Tanjong Pagar itself. Okay, so I'm coming back now to Midtown Modern itself, uh, which is in the Bugis area. So the concept over here uh, that developer has is to build a city of the future. Okay, and what do I mean by city of the future? Uh, it's all these concepts coming in together, which is, for example, uh, nature. Okay, instead of uh, the, the density of uh, the usual city living, uh, they are trying to incorporate uh, biophilic elements, uh, more nature elements, because they also see this rising demand of people who want to enjoy nature. Okay, so it's really uh, nature in the city. Okay, if you've seen their massive ads, uh, you know, in Bugis MRT itself, this nature element is really developed not it's really developed in depth it's not just on the surface okay what do i mean um besides having a luxury garden home uh, which is going to tie in as the main characteristic of midtown modern okay uh, which is the garden aspect there's going to be almost 200 species of trees and flora that is going to be spread over the landscape and gardens of over one hectare in midtown modern itself so that is really something that uh, Meta Modern has this space and they really utilize it to bring in this uh, nature element. Okay, so it's spread over the uh, E-deck itself and also on the rooftop gardens of the two towers. Okay, so this is uh, the entire Guaco Midtown to give you a, a better aspect. And Midtown Modern is actually Guaco Midtown too. Uh, they were very happy to be able to get this uh, government land sales so as to tie in um, very tightly with their own uh, Guaco Midtown uh, over here, okay, which is the commercial element where you have your grade eight offices, 770,000 square feet of it, uh, a very open concept podium, not enclosed. Okay, they want everything to be really open where the community can tie in uh, and network and socialize and very vibrant uh, kind of lifestyle, not enclosed. Okay, as well as your Midtown Bay over here, if you can see. Okay, so Shaw Tower itself is right beside Guaco Midtown and the whole building is going to be redeveloped. Okay, over here is your South Beach. Okay, and just across, which is direct uh, connected to Guaco Midtown itself, is your Suntec City. Okay, so again, this is Midtown Modern, directly above Bogus MRT in the change. This is your Tan Quilan, okay, all your famous eateries over here, uh, Duo, Duo Galleria, 
Okay, and just opposite here is your Bugis MRT, uh, Bugis Junction. Okay, so the entire Guaco Midtown is uh, like a city by itself. It's going to be a totally transform this whole area into a new Midtown district. It's going to give a new identity and lifestyle element. Okay, so it's not just, although it's the CBD, it's not going to be just about work. Okay, it's really going to give a whole new meaning to live and play as well. Okay, so that's the whole concept um, that they have uh, in terms of uh, concept and community. Okay, uh, this is the level one that you're seeing. So there are going to be restaurants, uh, uh, you know, throughout the entire development on level one. Okay, this is accessible to public. There's also direct access from level one uh, to your uh, Bugis MRT and Bugis Junction. Okay, so this is how it will look like visually in the future. So this is the level one of Midtown Modern. You have level one uh, commercial, okay? Your commercial is all on level one, 21 restaurants of it. And this is the uh, uh, access down to the Bugis MRT. Okay, so um, I think this concept is quite interesting. It's going to be the city's living room. So why living room? Um, when architect was sharing with us, okay, and when developer was sharing with us, they really wanted a space that ties in seamlessly to the surrounding developments, something that can enhance and really bring out that, that lifestyle better. So opposite us, you know, there's Tan Quilan, there's a lot of eateries, there's a lot of uh, um, things happening, very bustling, people are, you know, moving. Uh, very vibrant place. So it is really this same whole open concept over here as well. Okay, and a living room is a place where people gather, people socialize, people network. Uh, it's a very happening place. And so this is what it means to be in the city's living room. You're plugged into this network of activity. Okay. Okay, so it's activity, it's convenience, it's right at your doorstep. Everything here is right at your doorstep. So uh, again, to summarize, just now I covered, um, it's really the best of everything retail, dining, entertainment, schools, okay, shops, uh, and this is the grand arrival. So, um, Guacolin itself, they, sell, they always celebrate the arrival, and uh, again, in Midtown Modern, it's no different, okay, there is a grand arrival that really um, gives that whole grand feeling when you drop off or be, your guests come to visit you, you have this grand arrival space. Okay, so uh, this is the lounge area. So just like I mentioned where Wallach residence itself, uh, people actually work from the lounge. It's the same concept here. They want to encourage uh, different spaces for the community to use. And in, in this space, you can actually work from home, out of home. Okay, it's another space that really you can socialize, network. If your guests come and find you, you can have meetings here. You can have discussions here. You can even work here yourself. Okay, just a different place to work from home, out of home. Okay, and from this uh, concierge uh, lift lobby itself, which is only accessible to residents, you are actually transported as you go up to the e deck on the third level. Okay, so over here you have all your facilities, which is full condo facilities, inclusive of the fifty meter lap pool. Uh, you have your tennis court, and you have again over one hectare of uh, tree of gardens and landscapes, really large greenery, and they really put together all these different species to, to have a very botanic garden experience. It's really nature in your home itself, okay? We are really living in nature itself. Okay, so from the lift as you go up, you are really transported to a different world. Uh, this is the library area. So once it opens up, you really open up to the grand summer lawn, okay? And I think uh, this is something, again, they take pride in because to have a lawn of this scale, you need the space, you need to have that size, you need to have that scale in order to give this lawn. So not everything is packed together. You have this open space, okay, where your kids can play. You can host maybe your wedding, you know, an ROM over there as well, maybe. Okay, and this is the Grand Lawn, your garden lounge and your lawn pavilion. So uh, very open areas, okay, to enjoy the nature. This is one of the private gardens uh, that they actually featured and they talked about in their uh, media article as well. So this is the lily pond and the tea house. And I think, uh, you know, in Ta, it's another new lifestyle where people appreciate drinking tea. So you even have your hot water faucet over here as well, where you can drink tea and admire the whole landscaping. Okay, so this whole tea, where lifestyle living, living in nature comes about. Yeah, this is the tea house overlooking the lily pond. Okay, so I'm taking time to go through this uh, on the development itself now. 
um, really is something that uh, stands out by itself. It's not all the glass and steel buildings that you see surrounding you. And these uh, trees actually form a canopy. So the landscape architect actually uh, also did have this in mind when he was designing, okay, uh, a canopy to block off the surrounding tall buildings. So you, it's almost as if you're immersed in nature by yourself, okay? You are really uh, separate away from uh, all the other, you know, dense uh, high-rise buildings around you. And this creates a very unique character of uh, Midtown Modern itself. Okay, so there is three clubhouses, and again, to meet the lifestyle needs, sometimes if you have a bigger party to host, you can combine all three rooms, open up all three, or you can open up just two, and it can seat up to 50 packs. Not hold 50 packs, but it can seat up to 80 packs, okay? Uh, fi sorry, 50 packs in these three rooms when combined. Okay, and of course, the gym is there as well. So overlooking very nice landscapes. And again, uh, this is full condo facilities, so, which is very rare for, uh, you know, developments in the CBD. So you have a tennis court. And again, you have this play pavilion, which is just beside the tennis court. So for people who, you know, want to entertain, want to watch the World Cup, uh, want to watch the Wimbledon, you know, but don't want to, uh, you know, maybe your kids are studying for exams at home. You can always host a party over here, you know, where you can make more noise without distracting the rest of your family. Okay, so these are the different ideas uh, they have uh, to suit different people, uh, different needs of people in the family, different demographic groups. Uh, these are the two towers uh, where you have rooftop gardens on the 31st floor. So you have panoramic views, 360 degree panoramic views and gardens on the two towers as well. Okay, so um, I covered the location. I covered a signature Guacolam luxury residence where they have a very good concept. It's a very powerful concept. Uh, as well as the community aspect of it. So it's not just about location here, it's about concept and community as well. Okay, next will be, I'll be touching on Guacoland as a trusted developer with strong holding power. So what do I mean by this? Okay, so I want to take a look at the two most recent developments, uh, Guaco Midtown as well as Guaco Tower. Guaco Tower is actually in the Tanjong Paga area itself. Okay, and it is, it is going to be a long-term investment of Guaco land, okay? So uh, today, if you go to Guaco Tower, you can see how vibrant the whole place is. It's really transformed uh, how office space is being used, okay? It's not like the usual office space. It is something where it's more opened up. Um, if you take a look at level one, it's always bustling with activity. You, you have eateries there. You have people mingling, meeting there after work, even during work hours sometimes, okay? Um, and the residential component uh, of Guaco Tower, which is now a very vibrant uh, office tower, uh, is Wallet Residence. Okay, so it's also very well received by buyers and tenants who really want the best of the work, live, play lifestyle. Okay, so the same is going to be so for Guaco Midtown, it's really going to transform uh, and really uh, be another flagship development, just like how, how Guaco Tower is in Tanjong Park. Guaco Midtown will be that development in the Buddhist area. Okay, so uh, these are developments, uh, recent developments, I can't name all, I'm just going to name a few. So Martin Modern actually is going to TOP soon, okay, it's another quality luxury development by Guacolan in River Valley. Mayor Mansion is a freehold development in your Mayor area offering spectacular sea views. Okay, so what do these developments have in common? Okay, I want to look into this point because I think when making, uh, when you're looking at property, uh, there are many factors to look into and I think uh, this is something I want to talk about. Okay, so uh, due to time constraint, uh, let's take a look at Wallet Residence as, a, as an example, okay? So for Wallet Residence itself, okay, why did I bring this out? Uh, for developer, okay, they, when I say strong holding power, they really look at uh, protecting the buyer's interest, okay? Uh, they look into... Uh, let's, let's take a look at some of the prices, okay? So the blue arrow is actually uh, stack two for wallet residents. I'm actually comparing uh, transactions over uh, years, okay? So what I pull out is just to give you an idea of how they strategize uh, and how they price the development itself. Okay, so uh, back in 2013, okay, and 2014, um, a one bedroom there at 646 square feet, okay, was around 1.9. And then you can see that it then uh, started to transact at 2.0 million. And then in... Uh, 2017, okay, uh, it transacted at 2.2 million. Okay, let's take a look at another stack uh, in orange over here. You can see stack four, uh, 614 square feet. That was a one bedroom. Okay, in 2017, transacted at 1.8 million. Okay, uh, 2.0 million and then 2.2 million. Okay, so what do these figures tell you? And what can you predict for Midtown Modern based on this? 
Okay, how will day one sales be like for Midtown Modern? I can tell you it's going to be quite crazy. It's going to really fly off the shelves. Uh, later, I'll share with you, even our appointments are fully booked uh, across the two weekends of preview viewings that, you know, that we have. Okay, so day one sales is going to be crazy already. Um, if you were to wait, okay, and I, I always tell this to uh, my own buyers and to agents who have, uh, who have buyers as well, don't wait. You have to buy on day one itself because if you take a look, okay, uh, let's just take a look at this transaction uh, in stack two. Uh, in 2013, the price was about 1.95 mil. Okay, in 2017, four years later, the price was priced at 2.261 mil. Okay, so that's an uh, increase of 15, of more than 15%. Okay, so what I'm trying to say here is that, uh, in fact, I know quite a few foreigner clients, despite having to pay 20% ABSD, they are still confident and very convinced to buy Midtown Borden. Okay, uh, and I think it's quite easy to predict the sales volume, like I just mentioned. Okay, um, if you don't buy during the day one VIP booking, not only will uh, uh, yourself, your buyers, have to buy higher floors, okay, they will also have to buy at, at maybe maybe even possibly lower discounts and higher prices, okay? So you can see how developer prices have gone up over here uh, by more than 15% over the years, okay? And this is a real fact. Okay, so that's just something I want to share over here. Okay, so uh, being a trusted developer with strong holding power, um, Wallet is just one example. In fact, for Goodwood residences, uh, for Leiden residences, it was the same thing. Um, I have agents sharing with me, I have uh, buyers who also share with me that um, they didn't buy when it was the early stage. By the time they went in to buy, the price difference can even be as much as, because we're talking about larger size and higher quantum, it can even be as much as about a million dollars difference from the time that they could have bought and when they wanted to buy. Okay, and yet despite this, still sold out, buyers still buy. Okay, so don't wait. It's, it's really uh, something that I wish to point out point out um, prices adjust you may not know it you may not realize it when you decide finally that you want to come in and buy it may be too late already okay so I'm going to talk about um, I'm going to revisit this later but now I'm going to talk about a proven strong rental yield and demand for this location okay so of course when you look into property investment property purchase you want to know uh, what type of yield you can get or whether it's going to be easy to rent out what type of demand you can get when you sell or rent in the future is it going to be easy Right, so over here in Midtown Modern, you're in the Bugis area, okay, you have a massive pool of executive tenants, okay, I'm not talking about small pool, remember I said you're plugged right into this, uh, you're in the CBD itself, you're in the Central Business District, you're plugged directly connected to all these major office buildings, you're in a major commercial node, you have direct connectivity and transport to other commercial nodes nearby, okay, so uh, to name a few, you have offices at Bugis Junction Tower, your Shaw Tower that's going to be revamped. You're going to have offices there. Uh, Guacumi Town itself is going to have 700, 000, 700 over 1,000 square feet of office, grade A office space. Suntec City itself has 2.3 million square feet of grade A office space. Okay, so all these are prime office areas and uh, they really give you a good profile of tenants. These are your executive tenants. Okay, uh, South Beach Tower as well, your Raffles City uh, and the Gateway, so on and so forth. Okay, so SMU is just near, nearby as well. Okay, so uh, this was the slide I showed previously. I just want to highlight that it's really well connected to major business hubs. Major. You're already in a business hubs. You're also well connected to other major business hubs. Okay, so your Tanjong Paga area, Raffles Place, your One North, uh, all these are really huge uh, commercial areas itself. Your JLD, Payaleba Regional Centre, Changi Business Park, to name a few. Okay, so let me go... Uh, to look, let's look into, uh, you know, this proven track record of having a very strong rental yield and demand. Okay, so uh, dual residences, uh, as you can see, it's just across, it's, it's going to be, it's directly connected as well. Okay, um, we, let's look at by unit types. Okay, so studios and one bedrooms over there, uh, majority are transacted at 3000 over dollars per month. Okay, some going as high as 4300 per month. So the average transacted rental we're looking at is about 3400 okay, per month. And you can see in January alone, there were 16 transactions, 16 for rental. Okay, so there's more than one unit rented out every other day. So it's very, uh, what do you call that? Very high transaction of rentals, okay? Uh, very high transaction volume, okay? Let's 
customer. So over there, it ranges from 4,005 to 6,000 per month, averagely transacted at 5,001 per month. You have already 10 transactions in just January alone. Okay, so that's one unit rented out every three days. Okay, so this is already a proven location. And why I'm using uh, you know, this development here is because it really gives you a benchmark uh, to benchmark your own rental, okay, to project your own rental, uh, the type of rental that you can fetch in the future. And of course, things change. By then, you know, there are even more uh, connectivity, even more uh, new developments that, that have already sprung up in this area. So it's going to be even a totally different landscape by then, okay? But even now, you, you see it's already a very strong, uh, you know, proven record of good rental yield and demand. Okay, so with this, it's only going to get better with the rejuvenation of Bugis. Okay, so the transformation has already happened. It's already happened, but it's still ongoing. It's not the end yet. It's still, it's still ongoing. So it's only going to get better. Okay, so that's just an example of uh, 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 the, the strong rental yield and demand there. Okay, now I'm moving on to, um, and I think this is going to, you know, determine the growth prospects of uh, any property, the massive potential gain that you get, you can get from it. Okay, so we always look out for growth uh, we also look out to time our purchase with the market outlook uh, and also, you know, how to plan our exit, exit strategy. So this is something we look at when we want to purchase a property, okay? Um, how to exit the best, okay, with the best exit strategy. Okay, so I'm going to look into this now using uh, Midtown Modern, okay? So for massive potential gain, you can see in this uh, Bugis area, there's growth and development plans uh, for the Bugis master plan itself. So... You all recognize this? Okay, this is the Ophir Rocho Corridor. Okay, and uh, this Beach Road Ophir Rocho Corridor, it's already been confirmed in, uh, you know, the URA master plan. Uh, there's a lot of redevelopments going to be happening over here. Okay, so Midtown is over here. I'm going to uh, expand it later. I just wanted to focus in first. Okay, so you can see that there's a, going to be a lot of future growth. What do I mean by that? Um, you have a lot of empty sites. So if you notice, this is actually the colorful, you know, HDB at Rocho Center. It's already all been demolished, all been torn down. Okay, just waiting to be developed. Okay, so all this will be future commercial and residential sites as already uh, zoned in the URA master plan itself. Okay, uh, you have a lot of, uh, it's very exciting because all these growth plans are only possible if you have space to redevelop. Okay, and uh, government has already set aside all these as future commercial and residential developments upcoming. Okay, another future commercial over here. And you can see the transformation is not just limited to one place, but really spread across the entire Bugis area. Bugis village itself, capital land is going to uh, revamp it and turn it into an uh, Instagrammable, experiential retail hub okay so all these are to meet the needs uh, of the future okay so it's really transforming the whole landscape and i think it's very exciting uh, because you're talking about major developers coming in to redevelop okay and change the landscape then this is the uh, continuation from the previous slide okay the ophir Rocha area so meta modern is over here okay again uh, guaco Midtown. so all these are empty land now totally undeveloped that are going to, to develop into a totally uh, new development itself, okay? And for Guaco Midtown, it's going to be a major office, uh, grade A office space, okay? Uh, and it's going to really become, um, I would think it's going to become an anchor point of the entire uh, Midtown district of Singapore, okay? You have your uptown, downtown. Midtown is something that you don't have, uh, you know, something so iconic and landmark, but it's going to be the new Midtown district, okay? So that's what we uh, are trying to to bring out across that um, that is what they're planning okay is for this Bugis area how they want to change it okay then of course uh, the end the end was actually uh, launched uh, in 2019 okay uh, sorry yeah last year okay it was just launched last year and in fact uh, because of the prime location very strategically located um, it was really a no-brainer for a lot of uh, investors and sales stayers and even during the first weekend of preview close to 300 units were snapped up Okay, um, even right now, the studio, one bed, uh, studio are fully sold, one bedroom left the last unit, uh, the three bedroom dual key are fully sold, mainly the smaller units there. Okay, so um, with Midtown Modern coming up, no worries, if you didn't, you didn't manage to get the M, you have Midtown Modern, okay? But after Midtown Modern, then I, you know, I, I can't guarantee you which other development will come up as good as it is. Okay, in the future. Okay, then of course the new Shaw Tower that's going to be redeveloped. Of course, it's already existing, but they're going to um, tear it down and, and redevelop it. Okay, I also mentioned in terms of transport, 
in, in terms of transportation, the infrastructure, uh, this north-south corridor is also going to come up, target completion 2026. Okay, so there is also a lot of growth and development plans that include this uh, transport uh, network, okay, that will improve connectivity. Midtown is over here, okay, the north-south tunnel. North corridor tunnel. Okay, then I'm going into uh, Bugis as a location itself. So in fact, uh, even, even back in 2019, it was already identified by Property Guru as a future hotspot, okay, that will overtake Orchard as Singapore's new prime residential district. Okay, and even more so now, I think uh, the whole change in lifestyle is something that gives it a very strong identity such that you know, people are predicting it may even overtake Orchard as a lifestyle destination, as the place, as the place to stay in. Of course, Orchard will always remain Orchard. It will have its uh, share of fans. Um, but this also shows how strong Bugis will be as a property hotspot in the future. And even now, okay. I want to touch a bit on the prime central area. I think this is quite interesting because uh, in the past, we see a lot of... Uh, news on master planning outside of Singapore, uh, I mean, sorry, out, outside of the central area, okay, in the rest of the central area, you know, uh, but right now you see a lot of attention coming back to this prime central area. And I want to touch on this because we have upcoming, quite a number of upcoming developments that are going to happen in this, in this space. Okay, so there's going to be massive transformation at Bugis where, you know, called you are already going to connect Bugis, which is a micro market itself, to two other micro markets, which is City Hall and Marina Center. Okay, so it's going to connect, there's going to be increased connectivity uh, that will integrate all these three micro markets, City Hall and Marina Center, okay, which are major commercial nodes. Uh, this orange is actually the uh, Thomson East Coast line. Okay, so you will notice in the master plan numerous future sites that are upcoming uh, along this upcoming Thomson East Coast line. Okay, so there's major development plans in the master plan uh, that are happening in the central, prime central area itself. Okay, I want to uh, emphasize the word prime. Okay, because now is the time to revisit prime. Okay, and why do I say that? Okay, I'm going to develop a bit more in this aspect. Okay, what I'm going to share here, um, you know, after saying so much about the transformation in this area, for the prime central area, will property prices go up? What do you think? Okay, Midtown, Midtown Modern itself is in the CCR. We are in the CBD area, which is in the prime central area. Okay, uh, what I'm going to show next uh, is a factual sharing. Okay, and don't get me wrong. Okay, these are developments, are very, very good developments, top selling and best seller developments in the RCR and the OCR. Okay, and these are the transacted prices of these developments that they have fetched. Okay, so why am I sharing this? Am I saying that they are overpriced? Am I saying that they are, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, too high price? In fact, it's not. What I'm trying to say is that these are the current market prices that are being transacted right now. Okay, and for example, Paya Lebar itself is the RCR, not within the prime central area, uh, already fetching across 2,000 per square foot. Okay, so what I'm trying to educate is on um, of, uh, friends from uh, consumers, from buyers, from uh, and it's, it's, it's very normal when they see prices like that, they get a shock, okay? Uh, but it's not something new. It has been occurring for some years already, okay? The, the fact of it is that these are the current market prices. Okay, so um, even in your Woodley area, District 13, you're also seeing across uh, even transacting up to 2,400 per square foot. Okay, so what I'm trying to say is that the gap between the prime central area, the CCR, as well as the RCR and o OCR are really narrowing. And this may be a trigger point to push up CCR prices. Okay, so again, I just want to say that these are just uh, uh, factual. Okay, uh, Park Place, in fact, is... Uh, 2002, you know, can even hit 2002, 2003 per square foot. Okay, I missed out some transactions. Park Esta also in your, uh, you know, area, you know, is already across 2000. So this is just some sharing. Again, it's also almost fully sold already. Okay, so I just want you all to know that um, prices are not going to go back to what it was two, three, or even five years ago. Okay, it's very different now. And if you wait some more, it's, it's, it's not going to stay stagnant at that. It's going to change even more. Okay, so uh, in fact, all those prices are in line with what analysts have been predicting. Okay, so 
this is an article where uh, you know to double by 2030 uh, and they analyzed that uh, there will be a 5% year-on-year increase on the per square foot basis from 2018 all the way to 2030. Okay, and there is also a demographic shift. Uh, households are going to become smaller. It's going to be driven by singles. So you notice the take-up rate of smaller unit types is also uh, uh, more, more pronounced nowadays. In the past, maybe more of two and three bedrooms. Now you see more of one bedroom even. And, and that's why you see the rise of studio units coming up as well. Okay, so there's a shifting profile of foreign labor towards higher skilled uh, workers as well. So you may see an increase in tenant demand. Okay, so one in five households will be just occupied by one person from 2030, compared to one in eight in 2010. Okay, uh, this was another article, uh, you know, where DBS actually predicted the average uh, PSF to be 23 to 29 in you know by 2030 so it, you are already seeing it happening uh, and i think by the way it's being paced that is what you will be likely seeing in 2030 so would you want to wait till then okay if you feel that prices now are too high maybe you feel it's too high but that's actually the current market price now uh, in line with all the you know year on year price increase Okay, if you wait, if, if you were to wait till 2030, it would have doubled by then, which means that even in your OCR, the average pricing you're looking at could be from 23 already. Okay. And that will equate to a quantum of around 2 million to 2.5. Okay, so the current average, uh, or rather back in 2018, was about 1005. You can see, you can already start to see the change, and it's a reality. I think we can't uh, hide or escape from it. I just want to share this uh, with you very factually, okay? That is not something that we can avoid. Okay, so, but I take it, I take it as good news because for those of us who own property, uh, it's, it's an it's a appreciating asset, okay? And of course, you still have opportunity to, to come in now as well, okay? And the time is still a very timely, good time to enter the property market now. Okay, this was a recent article uh, in February last month um, where, in Hong Kong itself, a new record was set. Okay, uh, there have been pricier apartments, more than fifty nine million, but the PSF actually broke the record. So this is actually twenty three thousand dollars per square foot transacted for a prime luxury property in Hong Kong. Okay, so the record uh, is also, you know, being broken. Okay, uh, hitting new highs, continuously hitting new highs. Uh, there was also a new high set for the land cost, which is eight thousand five hundred. Uh, and some eight dollars per square foot okay for a, a piece of land over there okay so another record broken okay so this comes back to my point which i want to bring across here uh, and it is a fact that really a lot of the regions ultra high net worth uh you know people are saying that singapore prime properties are too cheap this is their comment and it's a real feedback and a sharing even from hong kong clients you know that come over here um they feel that it's really too cheap even after the 20 percent absd that they have to pay as a foreigner okay so uh this is going to tie back into uh the, the prime area that i'm going to talk about later so the question to ask is is singapore's prime property prices too high or too low okay this was another recent article okay uh, this month Okay, where uh, it talked about, you know, Asia's ultra rich really rank Singapore as the region's top choice for luxury homes. So what does this mean? Okay, they see it as a safe haven reputation, okay, being strengthened by the successful managing. I think government has always done us proud. They, they, they have never failed to really step up to whatever uh, external factors or market uh, uh, issues that arise, okay. Uh, demand is expected to recover this year. Okay, which is in 2021, demand is expected to recover, uh, where private homes in the prime districts remain relatively affordable. Okay, so now the word here is relatively affordable as of now. Okay, uh, we should really take advantage of that. And, you know, while it's still relatively affordable to time the entry into this market. Okay, this demand could fuel price rises of up to 7% in key markets. Okay, uh, ultra high net worth individuals in Singapore is forecast to grow. Okay, so uh, there is a forecast where it will increase the number of ultra high level will increase by about 31%. That's a huge increase. Okay, in just five years time between 2020 and 2025. So what will this imply for this uh, prime property segment, for this prime central area and for prime property prices? 
Okay, so uh, that's just a question I want to leave you with. And um, of course, when you talk about massive potential gain, uh, that's where you plan your exit strategy. Okay, so before you invest in any property, you must always think about the exit, right? Uh, we always talk about entry, but I think entry is very easy. It's more about the exit. Okay, what do you project? What do you predict? So when you invest today, okay, let's say in 2021, you may exit in 2025, maybe five years down the road, uh, or 2030, 10 years down the road, or maybe even later. Okay, in any case, I just want to remind, uh, just my word of advice, okay, uh, we should always look forward, not backwards, because we always tend to look backwards compared to the past, oh, prices then were so cheap, now, you know, it's so pricey, uh, how, how uh, I really can't make myself enter right now, but it's not something that you should let hinder your progress, okay, uh, to really start a property portfolio if you haven't. I know some of you may have already quite an extensive property portfolio. It is still a good time to enter. You can still find good opportunities. Always look forward, not backwards. Okay, that's something that I really want uh, to highlight to all of you here. Okay, so when we think about exit strategy, uh, we think about is there any growth? Okay, is it likely to grow faster and better than others? Okay, and another case consideration will be the entry price. So that's, uh, you know, the price when you enter, okay, uh, the, that you buy it. Is it going to be easy to exit in the future? Because that's going to determine uh, how much you can sell it easily and with good gain. Okay, so for the best exit strategy, you first need a low entry price. And I think that's one of the reasons why the M sold so well, uh, because they really started to come out with a more efficient layouts to meet the new demands and lifestyle of people. Um, when I say efficient, you still need to make sure that the space is good, okay? So layout is also still important. Efficient doesn't mean small space, okay? It can still be spacious. Later, I'll show you why. Okay, so um, let me see my time. Okay, let me see a bit. So I'm going to share a little bit about the surrounding developments uh, in comparison to Midtown Modern. Okay, you have Duo, Midtown Bay, the M, and South Beach residents. So again, I'm just going to share very factually as a comparison, okay? to give you a good uh, idea about, uh, you know, the price that you're entering in relative to when you exit. Okay, so for dual residences, uh, it's a really good, okay, let's take a look at, let's say we want to sell in 2025, okay? Dual residence is going to be nine years old. Okay, there are one bedrooms there are transacting, uh, light green is the most tra recent transaction. Uh, dark green is the highest transaction. Okay, two bedrooms are already going at 1.8 million to 2.4 million. Okay, recently transacted three bedroom was 3.1 million and 4 million. So these are the type of prices being transacted in this area itself. Four bedroom at four over million. Let's next take a look at Midtown Bay. Okay, Midtown Bay uh, is actually in Guaco Midtown itself, part of Guaco Midtown, 219 residences. It's sold around 30% already, close to 30% sold. Okay, so the one bedroom's there transacting at 1.5 million most recent and even up to 1.8 million. So that's the type of quantum people are are willing to pay to buy a development to stay in and invest over here, okay? Uh, and that's also the type of current market pricing that we're seeing. Okay, two bedrooms over there, 2.3 million, 2.5 million, three bedroom, 3.8 million. Okay, that one is a duplex. Okay, and the end, okay, like I mentioned, uh, in fact, the one bedroom now also only left with the last unit, okay, 1.3 million, 1.4 to 2 million, okay, highest transacted. And two bedroom transacted at 2.245. Okay, uh, so happened the recent transacted is the highest. Um, in fact, they still have two bedrooms there at about 1.6x million. Okay, but selling out fast. Okay, the three bedrooms there, 2.5 million, highest transacted. So Southeast Residence itself is a they build really big units. Okay, they don't have one bedrooms. The two bedrooms, you're already looking at a quantum price of already close to 4 million, most recent transacted. Uh, highest transacted, even up to 6 over million. Okay, three bedrooms at 6. 0.7 to 8.2 million. So it, it, this is the type of pricing that people are willing to pay, okay, to own a unit in this location. Okay, four bedrooms there, even transacting up to 10 million, okay, for a four bedroom. So what about Midtown Modern? Okay, and I think that's the good news that uh, all of us, uh, you know, I can share with all of you here today. Um, it's going to be totally brand new in 2025, totally brand new. Uh, and it's very, very affordable, low quantums available because they actually designed it with efficient layouts and sizes. So the one bedroom there is just from 1.1x mil. 
Okay, uh, two bedrooms from 1.4x, really attractive, low entry level prices. Of course, it's a 30 story development. Uh, as you go higher, you can always pay slightly more premium because when you rent out, when you sell, you can also fetch that premium. Okay, three bedrooms at 2.2 mil, uh, which you can see is extremely attractive compared to the uh, three bedrooms that have been transacted in this area. And four bedrooms from 3.6 million, you can see also extremely attractive. Okay. You know, and you can be already assured that with transactions at this quantum in this area, what you can feel safe and assured to transact at in the future. Okay, but please remember this pricing is only valid for 20th March VIP booking day only. Okay, and this is after all the uh, developer discounts for the VIP booking. Okay, I think I want to bring uh, your attention to this as well. And also, when you compare the developments, okay, are they right above the MRT? For Midtown Modern, it is. Okay, do they have full facilities? For Midtown Modern, it has, okay? So with that in mind, um, I want to go through some of the layouts uh, because when I talk about space efficiency, uh, are you still able to get that spaciousness? I think for, um, um, you know, all of you, uh, the consumers here today, uh, who have been invited by your Hutton's agent, they would have shared with you the layouts. And maybe when you first hear that a one bedroom at 409 square feet, you may get a bit of a shock, okay? Don't worry. Don't need to be shocked. In fact, at 409 square feet, you can see the show flat, okay? It does not have balcony. And in fact, for Guacoland this time around, they did something special. They did layouts without balcony from the one bedroom, two bedroom, and even up to the three bedroom because uh, they do recognize that some people wish not to have a balcony. Maybe they feel that they won't utilize it. So they'd rather space the, the, save the space, maybe have some savings out of it. Of course, there are people who still enjoy the balcony, our fresco dining. They still can work. Uh, you know, like work from home in the balcony area itself. Okay, so let me just share with you um, some USP. This is the show flat layout, uh, type A1. So you still have a very, very spacious living and dining room. Okay, um, these are just estimated sizes of, uh, you know, um, estimated measurements, 2.8 meters by 4.2 meters, 4.25, okay. So spacious master of 2.65 meters by 3.2 meters. And even the kitchen concept is designed to be enclosable. Okay, so this is very unique, it's very spacious. You can design to enclose it because we they do recognize that buyers, you know, some people when they purchase, they wish to uh, block off the kitchen area, okay? Uh, master bar comes with two doors, so you have a dual access. Okay, I'm just going to uh, fast forward a little bit. Okay, so for the two bedroom, uh, this is the show flat layout. It comes with two baths. Uh, the good news is that we already have the full floor plans uh, that were released today. Okay, so um, your Hutton's agent will be sharing that with you. Okay, hot from the oven. Um, so we do have a two bedroom that comes with just one bath and also comes without the balcony. Okay, for this particular show flat layout, uh, you have two bathrooms, very spacious living and dining. You can see the size is really big. It's almost the dimension of a three bedroom in the market. Okay, so at this size, 721, you're getting a really spacious living dining where you can fit a six-seater, spacious master, 2.8 meters by 3.5 meters estimated measurement, kitchen designed to be enclosable as well, and even the two bedrooms are en suite because the common bedroom, you have a dual access. So it's also an en suite concept. Okay, so very, very uh, impressive layouts uh, and spacing done. You also comes with a storeroom and also an enclosable uh, concept. Okay, three bedrooms. This is a show flat layout. Again, I have a three bedroom that doesn't come with balcony. That's just 900 over square feet, but the space is not compromised, okay? Because it's doing away with that, you know, balcony space that can be 70, 80 square feet, okay? Or even 100 square feet big. Okay, so for the three bedroom layout, you're again, very spacious living and dining, three meter by 5.2 meters. Uh, very spacious common bedrooms, master bedroom, okay? And you can, for this layout is enclosed. For the uh, C1 layout without balcony, it's actually uh, enclosable. It's an open concept, but very easy to enclose it, okay? And in fact, this one is very nice detailing by developers. C2 and C3 layout, they have this power plug, okay? So the lifestyle of people now, they like to gather over dinner, over hot pot, right? Electric hot pot. So for the C2 layout onwards, you have this uh, power point on the floor where you can just connect and then have your hot pot, or you can just work from home, set up your work desk at your dining table itself, okay? Okay, this is the four bedroom uh, show flat layout. It's the 1,800 over square feet one. Uh, okay, uh, they also have a, a typical four bedroom, which is at 1,400 over, which is very big by itself. Four bedrooms all come with private lift, very spacious living dining, four meters by 6.4 by 4.5 and 6.95. Okay, um, and you can see the layout, really impressive. 
private lift lobby, wet dry kitchen. Okay, huge master bedroom, huge junior master ensuite, uh, and huge and spacious two and three bedrooms. So I can tell you that um, we are already see receiving a lot of inquiries for this uh, larger unit type. They just go directly for the largest unit type, which is the four bedroom premium, 1,808 square feet. Quite rare uh, to get this kind of size uh, nowadays for any new development. Okay, and there are only two stacks of this four bedroom premium type. Okay, so uh, again, uh, we are not limited to just those layouts. There are, there are really a lot more layouts. I'm going to share with you this uh, video, quick fly through. Okay, it is the arrival fly through. So just let me share with you this video and enjoy. So this is where you enter into your grand arrival drop off point. This is the level one where you have restaurants, a very open space, you have natural skylights, the direct access to Bugis MRT, okay, and your concepts residential lift lobby. So once you enter, this is really, really impressive. You have gardens within, you can work at this area. Okay, so residents can actually take the lift directly up to the level three e deck. Okay. And it transports you into a totally different realm. It's like a garden space. You are greeted by this uh, grand summer lawn. Okay, and the grand piano is there. Okay, so that is uh, a fly through of the arrival itself. Very impressive. If you see the full video, it's even more. Um, it's really even more inspiring. Okay, uh, enjoy this next video. So this is nature in the city. You are really living in nature itself. You have almost 200 species spread across more than one hectare in Midtown Modern itself. And don't worry, the maintenance is very affordable. Okay. Okay, so this is what Guacoland is delivering. It's really a very uh, impressive product okay, that they have delivered. And why you should you buy Midtown Modern? So let me wrap it up, uh, you know, with 101% confidence. So people ask me why 101? Okay, it's really, like I said, when it boils down to is the location. Okay, it's excellent for both investment and stay. But for Midtown Modern, you also get the concept and community. It's not just about the location. And this is a signature Guacoland luxury residence. So if you look at their past, uh, you know, track record of developments, you can see the type of price assurance you get. Okay, they really, really protect the interests of their buyers, um, be it the stack price and the type of, despite whatever market movements there may be. Okay, so that is the assurance that they give uh, to their buyers, to consumers. It's a trusted developer with strong holding power, which is why I say you must buy on the VVIP booking day, because if you don't, you may, when you want to enter, you may only be left with the higher floor units and at a lower discount. Okay. Proven strong rental yield and demand. Okay, so uh, you really have a massive pool of executive tenants over there. Okay, like I said, you are in the business hub by itself. You're plugged in directly to this, uh, you know, great officers, this whole community and network, a thriving network. Okay, but you are also connected to other major business hubs. Okay, massive potential gain where you have your growth. Okay, uh, a really, um, you know, market is the outlook looks that it's going to be recovering and the demand for the prime uh, central area sector is also looking to uh, increase, okay? The question is by how much now and how fast and how soon, okay? Then, of course, uh, tie in with your exit strategy. So, growth and development plans in Bugis are already there in the master plan, uh, not to mention the prime central area itself. There is massive uh, development plans uh, coming up, okay? Orchard itself is going to be uh, uh, renewed, rejuvenated as a lifestyle destination, okay? Uh, so, with all this in mind, do you think property prices are going to go up or down? Is uh, prime property, property prices here too high or too low, okay? And is the, the low entry price with the right sizing and yet superior space, okay? That's something that, uh, you know, is, is really something that is afforded here at Midtown Modern, okay? So, uh, I would like to leave you with always look forward, okay? Not backwards. Um, really, really, really the don't miss out on Midtown Modern. Really don't miss out, okay? Uh, times infinity, don't miss out, okay? Um, and with that, how to not miss out, okay? I would like to share with you how to secure a choice unit with the best VIP discount, okay? So first, number one, secure a, a show flat preview slot, a viewing slot today if you have yet to do so. A congratulations if you have already secured because right now it's fully booked, but not to worry. We will still, uh, you know, manage it 
with you to make arrangements for you, okay, if you have yet to do so, okay? So the show flat preview will be from the 6th to the 15th of March. Please make time to come down and take a look. Um, even if the weekend slots are full, we still have prime uh, time slots on the weekdays itself, okay? Register for the VIP booking, which is on the 20th of March. Select your first, second, third choice units range, okay, for the booking on the 20th March itself. And on the booking day, secure the best choice unit within your within your choices, okay? If not, okay, so with that, um, you know, uh, please look back for your Hutton's consultant, okay, on uh, how to go about doing it. If you have any questions that you wish to uh, clarify, you can also do so.